Oh good, you're here. Have you ever sent an email to a huge list of contacts and had thousands of undeliverable email alerts come back to your inbox? If so, don't spend days sifting through all those undeliverable messages to find which email addresses are no longer active. There's a much easier way, and that's what we're going to be reviewing today. All right, I'll, I'll admit that this is something that's not going to happen very often, um, but if you do have an old list of contacts uh, that maybe haven't been updated in a while or haven't been maintained, uh, maybe they're sitting in a database somewhere, maybe in your CRM, and you decide to send out a bulk email to all of your contacts, well, you're most likely going to run into the situation where you're going to get a lot of uh, undeliverable email messages back. Um, in the case of one of my clients, uh, they sent out for the first time uh, a bulk email to a number of contacts that uh, uh, haven't been updated in a while. Um, what they ended up getting back uh, was about 25% of the contacts that they had in the system came back as undeliverable. Um, so you can imagine um, having about 3,500 uh, undeliverable messages coming back. And how are you going to deal with that? Are you going to go through each one of those undeliverable messages and find out, okay, which contact was undeliverable and then update in, update that in the database or the CRM? You're probably not going to have to go through, or you're probably not going to want to go through uh, uh, anything that would take that much time. So uh, my solution to that was to use um, Python and just use a simple export from, uh, uh, from Outlook. So uh, what you're looking at right now is, uh, is Outlook. Uh, the first step uh, to getting this done uh, would obviously be to select all your undeliverable emails and just, just move those over into a new folder. Uh, what I did here is I created a folder under my inbox just called undeliverable, and I moved a bunch of undeliverable uh, messages uh, into that folder. So my goal here is to take all these undeliverable emails that I saved to this folder uh, and just export it into one big text file. That should make it nice and easy to work with when I'm doing some uh, Python programming in order to parse that text file, because uh, it's just one file to work with. So in order to do that, uh, it's pretty simple. Just select all the emails that show up uh, in that folder that you created, and just go to File, and Save As, and save it somewhere where you know where it's going to be. I'm just gonna put it on my desktop for now, and I'm gonna call it uh, Emails, let's say, and just save it. There we go. So now we have all of these undeliverables. They're saved in one gigantic uh, text file that we can work with. So now that we have the um, uh, text file, that big text file uh, saved somewhere, uh, we could build some code around it so that we can actually get out all the email addresses that are undeliverable and, uh, and, uh, and use that data. So uh, the first thing I wanna do, I'm, I'm just in my text editor or my, my editor here, uh, Sublime Text. Um, and uh, that's what I usually use for, for coding, but um, you might be using uh, something else and that's fine. Um, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna import a couple of modules. Um, first one is the re module, uh, which is regular expressions. Uh, what that's gonna do is that's gonna help us uh, parse the emails uh, text file um, and search for all email addresses that show up in that text file. Um, and that's what we're gonna be using that for. Uh, the other, um, module that I'm going to be importing is pandas and I'll import it as PD. Perfect. Uh, pandas is going to be used. Um, I just like using it for exporting, um, information or exporting, um, uh, lists into CSV files. Uh, it just makes it real easy to do that. Um, so that's really the only reason for using pandas in this case. Um, the next thing that we need to do is to actually open up the emails text file. Uh, that we created uh, and read it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, uh, type out some code here and then I'm going to review kind of what it is. I'm just going to speed this up on, on your end here. Okay, so now that we have that, um, let's kind of go over uh, what I did there. So I wanted to open the, uh, the emails text file uh, so I'm just doing a with open uh, command here. So I want to open the emails.txt file. I want to open it for reading. Uh, and the encoding that I'm using is Latin 1. Uh, I found that worked for uh, uh, text 
um, text files that were exported from uh, from Outlook. Um, maybe depending on your version of whatever software you're using, or even if it's Outlook, a different version. Um, I'm using Outlook 2016, I think it is. Uh, but if you're using something different, you might have to change this encoding around uh, to something else. But if you are using Outlook, uh, try Latin one. It'll probably work for you. If it doesn't, if it doesn't, then uh, just try something else. Um, and I'm going to have this open as my file. And then what I want to do is I want to create a variable that I'm just calling data uh, is going to be equal to my file that I just opened uh, dot read. So it's going to read in that entire file and save it inside of this variable called uh, called data. Now, the next thing that I want to do is I, I, I want to read this entire uh, text file and I want to find all cases of email addresses that show up uh, and basically save that into a list. So I'm just calling uh, match a variable that's going to find all those cases. So it's going to use my uh, regular expressions uh, module <clears throat> and it's going to find all string cases that have essentially this these types of features. So what are the features? The slash W basically means um, alphanumeric characters, uh, including underscore. So it's looking for A to Z, lowercase, A to Z, uppercase, uh, zero through nine numbers, uh, and, uh, and underscore. Uh, all of those can appear obviously in, uh, in email addresses. And we also want to look for decimals because they can appear in emails as well. And hyphens can also appear. So we're going to look for any cases that have this followed by an at sign or an at symbol, I should say, um, followed by again, this, uh, alphanumerical characters, uh, alpha, alpha numeric characters, um, uh, as well as the decimal place and the hyphens. And then we also want to grab, um, the data that comes after that. And we're going to save that in this, or, or sorry, we're going to save it as match, but we're going to be looking at, um, uh, we're going to be searching through data, which holds all the uh, information from the text file. So that's essentially what we're going to be doing. So that should go through that entire file and find all the matching, all, all the email addresses that show up there. So, um, the next thing I'm going to do is just, uh, make it easier to work with. So, um, uh, one thing you should know inside a undeliverable email, a lot of times, uh, an email address will, sh will appear in one email, um, you know, multiple times, you know, three, four times, uh, even, uh, so there's going to be a lot of duplicates inside of this little match variable that we, that we created. Um, because I don't care about how many times something, uh, something occurs. I just want to know what email addresses were occurring in all of those, uh, undeliverables. Um, what I'm going to do is just, uh, get rid of all the, uh, all the duplicates that are there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say, let's move up here. Uh, match is going to be equal to set match or set match. That makes sense better. Uh, so what that's going to do when you turn, uh, when you turn something into, uh, a set, um, a set can only have one, uh, uh, one occurrence of any value inside of that set. So if you, if you, uh, convert a list into a set, um, and something appears there more than once, uh, the set, uh, of that list, let's say, uh, will only have one occurrence of, uh, of everything. So that's a nice, easy way to kind of get rid of duplicates. Um, but I actually want this back into a list. So it's nice and easy for, um, for pandas to export into a CSV. So I'm going to say match is going to be equal to list match. So there we go. So now I'm going to have, uh, no duplicates inside of a list variable called match. So the next thing I want to do is I just want to do, um, uh, a data frame for pandas. So I'm going to say, uh, DF for data frame is going to be equal to PD and that's pandas data frame. Uh, and I want to use the match variable, uh, columns is going to be equal to address. Let's say, so what I'm doing here is uh, I'm just um, creating a data frame uh, in pandas that's going to include the entire list of uh, email addresses. And I'm just going to give it a call, uh, 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 like a header column called address. So it's going to be, it's going to be the first one to appear um, in, in the list. So I did that and I also want to sort it. Um, the reason why I want to sort it, and I'll do that real quick here. Um, but the reason why I want to sort this list is because in a lot of those under undeliverable messages, um, the same 
type of email will actually appear uh, many, 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 many times. So, um, and it'll be most likely uh, the recipient of uh, uh, the undeliverable message. Uh, you'll see like a weird kind of, you know, 30 character uh, code followed by basically your email address. And that'll, uh, because that 30 character code changes every single time, uh, it's actually gonna appear there a whole bunch of times. So if you if we sort this list, uh, then we, when we open up the CSV file and say Excel, we could just nice and easily find all those and just highlight them all and delete the delete those rows and get rid of them. Um, yes, you could use uh, pandas to actually do that automatically, but I mean, really, you're just going to be doing this one time most likely, so uh, no big deal uh, in just doing that inside of Excel. So uh, let's just do that. Let's just sort the list. So what we want to do is, uh, let's see, we got our data frame and... Oh, uh, uh, it's going to be equal to data frame dot sort values and we want to sort it by oops uh, by address and I think I need um, square brackets around that yeah that looks right okay so we'll do that and then we want to just export it into a uh, CSV file so let's do that uh, so data frame dot two CSV. Um, let's call the file list of addresses dot CSV. Um, sounds good. And I don't want any index. I don't want to add an index column. So I'm going to say index is going to be equal to false. That looks good. Okay. So let's just uh, save this and run it and see how it works. Okay. So here I am in the Python shell and I just opened up uh, the, uh, the file that we just created, parse.py, um, and um, let's just run it. So I'm just going to go to uh, run the module. Let's see what happens here. It's running. Might take a second. Oh, there we go. It's done. And so it should have saved a CSV file uh, on in our directory there. So let's just find that and open it. I'll just open it in Excel. Just loading up here. Okay, so here we are. So this is what we got. Um, so here's our um, uh, header here that we just called address. And as you can see, like I, like I said, there's gonna be all these, uh, uh, it's going to find a lot of these things because basically this does match the sequence for an email address, but in a lot of these undeliverables, you're gonna get a lot of these. So sorting it actually makes it a lot easier because I know that, you know, me at dowlingsolutions.com. I'm not an undeliverable. So I can just go through all these and just delete those rows. And at the end of the day, what we have now is just a CSV file. After we get rid of uh, uh, things that look like this, what we have is all the email addresses that are undeliverable. Um, and then we could use that um, depending on what system we're using. For example, if you're using uh, Dynamics, uh, you can open up all your contacts into uh, a dynamic Excel file and then maybe do a, a V lookup on all the uh, uh, contacts, email addresses, and compare it to this list of undeliverable email, address, email addresses. And if they show up on the list, then they just, just change their, uh, their status to inactive or you know, do something with them. Um, but that is it. Hopefully um, you enjoyed the video. Um, if you did, you know, uh, uh, subscribe, uh, hit the like button. If you didn't like it, I'm sorry I wasted your time. Um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully I'll uh, see you again next time. Thanks a lot.